Hi everyone, it's Carol from Crinkled Path Journals and I'm back with a Sunday Snappy Snippets. This is an open collab. Anyone is welcome to join. All I'm asking is that you post a 10 minute video with your quick tips for junk journaling. Today I thought I would do a quick rundown of ways to use envelopes in your journals. And I'm sure that I've learned from many resources over the years of junk journaling. Let's see how many I can think of in 10 minutes or less. I was inspired by my Thrifty Thursday when I brought this card to your attention and how it looks like an envelope and how it opens. And I had never seen somebody use an envelope to make a flip like this. It got me thinking about envelopes in general. First of all, let's talk about envelopes. We all get junk mail. One of the things about junk mail is if you look, they all have different patterns inside. So if you turn them inside out, and I wanted to point this one out because did you know that the Samaritan Purse envelopes have Luke 1037 on the inside? While I'm on the point of Samaritan's Purse, I will give a quick shameless plug for Operation Christmas Child, something we do every year, and it's organized by Samaritan's Purse. You can go to their website, fill up a shoe box, and drop it at a distribution site. They're all over, but I think one of the most impactful things about filling a box is that each child that receives a box in a third world country, it is likely the only Christmas present they will ever receive in their lifetime. Thanks for considering that in your holiday gift giving. Now let's get back to envelopes. So you can take an envelope and turn it inside out and use it this way with the fancy pattern on the outside. All the junk mail has different shapes and sizes, and we love the ones with the windows and fancy patterns. Look, they get bigger and bigger, and some of the advertising ones, they don't want you to have any clue what's coming in it, so they don't put any markings on the outside. Here's a giant one from USPS. Then, of course, we have our regular standard envelopes non-window and of course I just keep a sundry of envelopes. It can even be something where you've got something written on it already because you can put it over that or maybe you'll use that side glued down. I'm going to keep this one out and I'm going to grab my journal that Linda just made me and let's go ahead and try this trick with this envelope. So I'm going to need to cut this end off and then I'm going to need to cut it along the bottom. Just ever so little off the bottom and the side. This could be glued onto a page like this and you could glue just on the edges and then you would have a tuck spot behind and then you have this flip out journaling space and you could even put some kind of a little button or a piece of cardstock glue the bottom half so that the flap can tuck in there so it's not flapping around when you're turning pages. Linda even used an envelope in here and she's got this cute little chicken peeking out the window. <laughs> we can use an envelope by putting it over the page. This is probably the most simple way. And you can either attach it by gluing this or you can just clip it on. For a smaller envelope, you can do it on the top of a page. You can glue this part of the envelope flap on the page and have it be a flip out. Or you could even use this as a page in your signature by stitching this part of the envelope into your signature. Now let's talk about gluing things down. Like I said, with this one, you can glue along the edges and you can have it be a top loading pocket or a side loading pocket behind the envelope and then you have the envelope here. If your envelopes are stuck already, I have some that are old and the seals are already stuck, you can just trim off the top and then you could take your punch and punch a thumb notch so you could get into it and that can go anywhere on a page. You can take your standard envelope and fold it in half and work it into your signature, in which case you probably want to take off the flap or tuck it in. So then only half of it would be showing sticking out this side as a pocket and have it as a little flip or you can fold it in half 
and put it over the page. You don't actually have to use this side for a pocket if you don't want. You could seal the envelope and cut the edge to make it into a pocket. And you could take two envelopes and put them together with a hinge of some kind and stick them over the page. And then you could slide them on and off to whatever page you wanted. And you can even do something as fancy as putting a little magnet in it so that it clips through the page and holds it in place. Let me grab this one. If I cut off the banking information here, and probably better to do this with a paper cutter so I got it nice and straight. And I've got just a little piece of cardstock here as demonstration. You can tuck something in the pocket Something that fills the whole window would probably be better. Of course, again, we want a, maybe a little bit taller page or a shorter window. You could glue the top and the bottom and have a belly band. You could also just use an envelope for a belly band and put whatever decorations you wanted on it. And then you could tuck something else in across the page like this. You can take envelopes if you have some that are the same. You can stagger them like this and then fold them, maybe even one more going the other direction. And then you can either pamphlet stitch or staple in this crease. And then you can cut the whole edge off and you'll have lots of little waterfall tucks. You can put something with a cute pattern in the ones with the windows, including the one on the back. Here's my one that says dad. I can use this in a couple different ways. I can cut it at an angle. Again, a paper cutter would be handy with this to make a peak pocket where something you stick in it is sticking out. You can also cut the corners off of an envelope to make a corner tuck. And this can actually go over the page like this. And it can be a tuck on both sides. If you have envelopes that are the same, I can glue this one down to the edge of the page. And then I can glue this tab to this envelope. And you just want to leave a little extra space here so that it's not right into the gutter or it might not fold easily. And you could keep doing this for a few times or a couple times, no matter what you want. And then it would be an accordion fold and all of those pockets would still be open to tuck things in. Now, when I first started junk journaling, I think it's in my junk journaling introduction video. I had an envelope stuck on the page like this and it's very hard when the opening is pointed into the crease here to get things in and out, especially if it's something big. So just keep that in mind to keep your openings facing out or up. Another thing we can do with our folded pocket, put a thumb notch in it. And now we have two pockets if we want to glue it down with a flip in the middle, or you can put glue along both sides and do it this way and you'd have three pockets. And you can even stagger this if you wanted with your three pockets. With our deconstructed envelope, if I wanted to leave it looking like a regular envelope, I could glue the back down where all of the writing is on the page and put another little tuck thing here so that it's not popping open. And then I can open it for some hidden journaling space. You can also cut this down to size so it's even on both sides. This could be used as a tuck still. The flap is glued shut, so I'm going to cut the top and then I'm going to take off part of this. And then I can use this to fold over and make an envelope. And it's just a cute little window. And again, don't forget that you can disassemble this if you don't like the writing on there and you don't want to take the time to cover it with paper or something to embellish it. You can just cut it open and turn it inside out. 
Just glue up the sides and you're good to go. Now in the comments below, let me know what you do with envelopes that I didn't remember or haven't seen before. Thanks for coming along for Sunday Snappy Snippets. And I hope you'll join me by making a 10 minute or less quick tips video to share on a Sunday or close to a Sunday sometime soon. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.